we'll talk about three different types of price discrimination and kind of lump second and third degree together, but I want to introduce it to you here separately. The most extreme type of price discrimination would be first degree or perfect price discrimination. And this happens when everyone, all consumers in the market, have to pay their reservation price. That's the highest price you would be willing to pay for a product. You walk into a store, you have to pay your maximum willingness to pay. Now that doesn't really happen in stores very often, but we do have a couple real world examples of when this might happen. The first is haggling. Haggling gets us something pretty close to this. If you've ever been to a market where there are no prices, like an antique store, this is common in other countries, in order to find the price, you have to ask the person working at the shop. That person will likely tell you some outrageously high number. They will say, that t-shirt costs $200. You say, well, I'm not willing to pay that. Would you take 50? And you negotiate until you reach a price. The reason why they start out at a really high price is that haggling is uncomfortable, particularly for Americans. Haggling is really uncomfortable. What happens is they start out at a really high price, you try to work them down, they come down, 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 down. As soon as you kind of get in that range of what you're actually willing to pay, you say, fine, here's the money, I'm gonna go, right? So this gets something close to what you would actually be willing to pay. Another example of this is a reverse auction, sometimes called a Dutch auction, where the auctioneer, instead of bidding the price up, starts at a really high price, the first person to raise their hand and say, yes, I'll pay it, wins the auction. And that would also elicit the highest willingness to pay. Let me show you on this graph what first degree price discrimination or perfect price discrimination is gonna look like. We can charge every single customer their reservation price. Where are the reservation prices on my graph? That's given by the demand curve. These are the customer reservation prices. Just like before, any firm, we want to produce as long as marginal revenue is greater than a marginal cost. In this situation, I can now lower the price for each individual customer without changing the price for the previous customers, because I can charge different prices to everybody. So these high willingness to pay customers will pay a high price. The lower willingness to pay customers will pay lower prices. Everybody pays a different price. So I want to produce as long as that price is greater than my marginal cost curve. Okay, that means that I end up here at the socially optimal quantity same as competition, supply equals demand, price equals marginal cost, because I'm able to charge every consumer their reservation price. So deadweight loss in this situation is equal to zero because I'm producing the socially optimal quantity by charging uh, people their reservation prices and producing as long as that reservation price, that willingness to pay, is higher than my cost of production. What's happening to surplus here? Well, remember producer surplus is the area below the price and above the supply curve. So producer surplus is equal to total surplus. Total surplus is entirely captured by the firm. Consumers get no surplus. They're paying their reservation price. You walk into the store, you're willing to pay $10 for a t-shirt, that's how much they're gonna charge you. You're willing to pay $8, that's how much they're gonna charge you. So producers capture all of the surplus in the market, but there's no deadweight loss, which means that price discrimination gets us to the socially optimal outcome.